Yes. All right. So this is. Let me just announce this. It's the Immortals versus LOET. Clan Wars Frontlines Operation Torch. First round for these two teams to play. Um, if you can, I can can I stall enough to call out the tanks before, or do we want me to do that after you launch? It doesn't matter. It's up to you. All right. Those are tanks picked. We've got an E4, two Bat Chats, an IS7, two T57 heavies, and an E5 for the Immortals. If you call out LOET and then launch it afterwards, Vanilla, that'd be awesome. All right, we have an E4. We have a Starve 103. We have two IS7, two 57 heavies, and a Ronwagen. And I am going to start this. I have yet to see the Swedish team he be played, so I'm excited. Um, I recall it being played last week, and it must have been, mm. it must have been Loet picking it. Because uh, if you don't recall it, it must have been the Saturday, like I was saying. Uh, mm. Saturday, I did, uh, did the matches with White Chicken, and and I remember. Uh, a team picking STRV. Uh, it, it turned out to be a good pick, uh, from what I can recall. I don't remember anything being um, a problem with it. It's a very stealthy, stealthy TD. It is. Those Swedish tanks are really not anything to mess with. They're really good tanks. All right. Get. Allied versus Axies on the screen. I almost forget to do that every single time. And there's no way for anyone to holler at me because there's a 10 minute delay. So <laughs> by the time they holler at me, it's way too late. <laughs> uh, Immortals in the red. The Axies on the right. L-O-E-T in the blue. Immortals sending their bat chats into the middle. Smill and Nerd Kisses girls. Scouting out. Unfortunately, the camera is cutting off all of LOET's team from the map. You don't see them on the mini-map. I can tell you it's because they are on the zero line, and the zero line, for whatever reason, is just slightly off the edge of my screen. It's always been like that, whether I'm streaming or pubbing or playing. It's, it's, it's on my end. Smill gets hit. First blood drawn. Gets hit again. Oh. LOET's got a nice setup there to uh, deal with the bat chat push. Immortals claiming the, the center hills in this map. LOET didn't seem to want to have anything to do with that area. They've positioned in the farther back uh, quadrant. Both very good setups, though. I've seen them used successful um, by teams on countless occasions. Pretty even damage so far. The only tank suffering substantial damage is Smill in the bat chat. He got hit pretty hard early on. Biotic Hollow taking some more damage for the Immortals team. Sir Tubbins getting hit from the stir of the invisible Swedish TD in the far back corner coming into play. I can't believe how fast it reloads. It's a crazy tank. Steel Titan inching towards, uh, inching around this bunker. Nerd kisses girls with Smill trying to come in on the rear, but the T57's punishing him hard. Did you see that? Wow, Smill lost. Or Nerd, Nerd kisses over. girls lost like two thirds of his health in like three seconds. It was a bang, bang, bang. The T57's, and then they went on the reload because they saw him retreating. Mortals pushing up to the opposite side of that ridge. That LOET's. They're really trying to get those bad chats out of there. LOET 
I think, coming out of this game, surprising uh, the Immortals with how much skill some of these tankers have. Giddy getting singled out by Immortals. He's the first tank to go down. Immortals taking the lead in kills. But LOET having a 10%, 12% lead on the, the health. Those bat chat guns from Immortals able to clip out the cran wagon, giving someone is on fire. Again, Ooh. more tanks falling by, uh, on the LOET camp. It's three to one kills for Immortals, but LOET has lost their health advantage. Not taking those bat chats down was was um, devastating for LOET. If they could have taken those bat chats out, Dreamcast's girls is really trying to get around here, but that Swedish CD is keeping them lit. The mortals pulled this right back when it looked like the immortals were down a lot of health. They've come back and shown that time and time again, guns in the game can trump the health gap very quickly. Wooden Bobcat Man, I don't know if he... He's unsure what he needs to do here. Kilimanjaro is hunkered down in that back corner. He, he's not going to be able to take any more hits. Oh. And both of the oh. TDs are on just a sliver of health. But Immortals have two of their tanks on very low health. Uh, as well, the only tank that can take an extra hit Ooh. is is Stang in the T-57. Losing Kilimanjaro was putting the nail in the coffin for LOET because now they don't have the crossfire, the, the two-shot. Once he, once oh, he Bobcat Man it. fires, he's in trouble now. Yeah. Excellent battle. That was very fun to watch. Uh, Immortals... Um, Immortals taking it in the end, but I really, I really thought. I don't know about you, but I really thought the LOET was coming out to win that one. I really, did. I thought the bad chats took a little bit of early damage, but they did well, you know, waiting, being hurt. All right, so we'll do this damage real quick, and we'll do the, uh, we'll do my quick tally of the points. Um, Immortals having a pretty good damage spread. Uh, Stang in the T-57 and Steel Titan in his as well, getting 28 and 2700 damage dealt, the rest in around 2000 uh, for the Immortal side. They get 20 points for the victory, 14 points for all the kills, and an extra 2 points for 2 surviving tanks, 36 points total. Over on LET's side, the E-4, Wooden Bobcat Man, getting 4000 damage. But Kilimanjaro in the STR 103B getting 4250. So there's those TDs putting in a lot of work, and they just weren't able to uh, carry the victory in the at the end. The the end game for TDs when they find themselves alone is very hard because their reloads so long. Um, if if just one of the LOET tanks could have regrouped and, and stayed alive, I think that would have made a big difference. But LOET getting five kills worth 10, point, 10 points for that round. So it's a 36 to 10 round win for the Immortals. All right, we're getting ready to launch round two of Operation Torch between LOET and the Immortals. Uh, LOET coming out with four bat chats and 350 Bs. That is a lot. A lot of burst fire there. Started. 
Immortals and I coming out with an are down up there. four, two bat chats, a missing tank, and something Ooh. else that I didn't see. All right. So oh, Immortals had had a disconnect. E4, two bad chats, two IS-7s, and a T-57 heavy. I have no control over anyone, anyone's disconnects. Um, it's unfortunate it happens, but sure does. and it's it it really hurts. Like, it really feels bad when it happens. I mean, even for the team that... Oh, it makes me feel horrible. I know. <laughs> but, I mean, you can't... Do, you can't... Like, unless it happens before tank selection has taken place and all that, but it, but as soon as you start tank selection, that's basically the start of the round, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the... what What's the ruling for Clan Wars Frontlines? Because as far as I'm... I know any. It's, I know. Just with any other event, it's you know it disconnects um, I know your that problem. If they disconnect, it is unfortunate, and they have to keep playing. Um, but uh, you know they can't sub anyone in until next time, and it, it sucks. It makes me feel really bad when it happens, and it does happen quite a bit. L-O-E-T, got their four bat chats in the middle, their 350 B's in the middle trench. Immortals, I'm gonna... I'm gonna speculate that they'll play a bit of a passive game with the core four back there, the two bat chats doing the long range scouting. Creating a buffer zone between um, the L-O-E-T team and the... Uh, E4 and the heavies. Oh, LOET rushing in with the four bat chats, and Immortals have found a lane to get great shots in. Am I late? Almost dead. Immortals taking a huge damage lead early on. It's a bit skewed because of the missing tank. But wouldn't Bobcat Man also losing 50% of his health? Immortals are, you know, they're they're a gold team ranked right at the top of, of every sort of leaderboard you can look at, whether it's Watt Clans, WNF rankings, and they're proving proving why. I mean, even down a tank, they have uh, taken a health lead huge in this. Nerd Kiss's girl is getting tapped three, four times there. He's on a sliver of health, so. L-O-E-T just lashing back, saying. Saying, this isn't a. F uh, we're putting up a fight here. <coughs> L-O-E. Uh, Jameis for L-O-E-T. Getting hit a few times. He loses his ammo rack. Smill in the bad check, getting the crossfire there. I think that's one thing that LOET's got to learn. Um, get some get some experience and practice on is conserving health. They seem to lose quite a bit of health in burst uh, in burst. Like they need to they need to be a little more conservative. They've got one, two, three, four, five tanks that have all taken damage and four of them quite substantial damage. Bat chats are making a rotation here for the rear. They need to take Nerd Kiss's girls out so he can't punish them. Nerd Kiss's girls is gonna put shots in the flying egg. He's gonna take him down. And over here, you got the other bad chat for the Immortals put in the crossfire. So as LOET pinched in on the Immortals, the two bad chats stayed on the outside and protected the, the 
the rest of the immortal seems from the outside so much skill from the immortals here they just completely neutralize yeah. the push by loet even with one person down they like you know nothing against loet but the immortals have you know they have really good chemistry they're a really good group of people i think that their chemistry is what's going to bring them the, bring them the win Got to put the split, the logos up during the round. Even down a person. That's that's great to see that it's not affecting them. Yeah, immortals down a tank, uh, but still taking that round. Uh, Thirty-eight hundred damage by Smill in the bat chat. He was the one um, really punishing the yellow et push from behind. Uh, Desert Desert Storm getting four of the kills though. He was on cleanup duty, and Sir Tubbins in the E4 getting 2,300 damage. Uh, over on the LOET side, not something you want to see in a in a comp battle. Three goose eggs. Um, unfortunately, those were the tanks that got caught during the push. <laughs> Um, yeah, I see Smill is able to uh, really neutralize that push. So the points here for, for NL, or for Immortals, they got 20 points for the round win, 14 for the um, kills, and 4 for the uh, survived tanks, 38 po total. Um, LOET gets 2 Four for the kills, and the tank that did not join counts as two points as a kill as well. So they got a six point, six points for that round. We're getting ready to go live or launch round three here for Immortals versus LOET. Immortals picking an E4, two Bat Chats, two IS7s, two T57 Heavies. LOET picking an E4, an STRV, two IS7s, two T57 Heavies, and a Chieftain. All right. All right. I am going to launch. I feel a little, uh... I feel a little, um... I feel like LOET isn't being given the, um the stream they deserve. I've had them for UNL, now I'm having them for for Immortals. I mean, what what's worse? Having, like, Dragon C, uh, pulling 7F off uh, out of retirement and having them play against them? Uh, I keep streaming <laughs> LOET against, like, the best of the best of the best. And, I mean, they, they still look good, even though they're being defeated. They're such a. They, I really think they're a good team, and and when they get the experience under their belt, like they've never competed in any event, and they still look like a good team. So, I think the longer they stay in this event, the better they're gonna get with each round. <clears throat> Allies on the left in the L red, the immortals. You mean L O E T? L O E T. Yes. There's, right. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, they're they've been playing against some good, some really like high rank good clans. I think this is a really good experience that they could be really up and coming. Well, as I said with last week, I streamed them against UNL and um, I, UNL had beat them. Um, UNL like is so good, but they went on uh, unstreamed for their other three battles last weekend, twelve and zero. <laughs> so. You know. Immortals moving their heavies through towards the center hills, undetected, sending their bad chats to the middle. As per usual. LOET doing a repeat of round one, sending their sturve into the back corner and grouping up behind that ridge. It worked out really well for them in the initial phase of the uh, of round one. Um, I think they just 
it just slipped out of their hands. I think it was their battle to win in round one, and it slipped out of their hands. Definitely. kind of seems like LOET is kind of going with the same strategy they had last time, except for the 57s aren't where the Chieftain is. And the Chieftain is just waiting for those bad chats. Smill in the bad chat. Pulling up around. Nerd kisses girls. Falling in behind them. Same, same setup they did last time. Yep. Very similar setup to uh, round one. Uh, off camera behind me, you can see on the mini map is the STRV. He's sitting up in the corner. So if you see any shots coming from below my screen, that would be Kilimanjaro. Trying to keep the bat chat in the corner, the far left of my screen, so you can see if he makes a move. But here comes Steel Titan, the T57. Roxy spotted each other. Smill got hit twice there. He moved forward, and you can see the the lane here that. L.O.E.T. has hunkered down and stopped the bat chat push from. Mortals moving up. Climbing the opposite of the ridge that L.O.E.T. is behind. Smell goes down. Mortals making a push on the rear. And pinching in from the front as well. The difference from this in the first rounds is going to be that one of the bat chats went down this Ooh. time, where last round, round one, they, the the LOET team was not able to finish off that that uh, bat chat. I think this three on three exchange here is. Is really good. They're really trading shots. Three hundred damage. Now over on the LOET side, not something. Oh, Sir Tubbins is down. Yeah. Ayers takes a ammo rack as well. LOET is up one tank and 15% health, 16% health here. Three of their tanks close to death though, so. Really try that push. So. So, it's gonna be. Um, it's going to be a close battle, even still, with the advantage LOET clearly has at this point. I'm nervous for that Chieftain. He's just kind of sitting there by himself. He's one shot. Doesn't really have much cover, like, from his team. The bat chat is almost reloaded. Bat chat bouncing a shot. Wow. Steel Titan has grouped up with her kisses girls in that corner as well. Both teams down a tank. Immortal's able to take out I am I late in the chieftain. Ooh, Steel Titan getting clipped, getting hit there. Yeah, getting out that open. He goes down. Smill goes down. 
Or no, Steel Titan. Yeah, it was Steel Titan that goes down. Yeah. The the list changed order and it threw me off. Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bobcat Man gets a big hit on Ayers, and Kaiser steps forward to take out Tubbins, bouncing a shot from him and Ayers at the same time. That was a good exchange. L-O-E-T taking a two-gun lead. Oh. Ayers taking out Bobcat Man. And Nerd Kisses Girls taking out Panda to even up the guns at three kills each. Immortals, I think, struggling to pull this oh, one off. Good for Nerd. Oh, Kaiser misses. He made an aggressive push there. I hope Ooh. he doesn't pay for it. He bounces the shot from Ares. Oh, that was big. Kaiser, Kaiser gets hit, killed oh. from behind. Oh, Immortals. Turning this one around. Hitting Kilimanjaro with an ammo rack while he moves in on Nerd Kiss's girls. Wow. Down goes Ares. Three on two. Jameis gets hit. For, he gets ammo racked. Wow, here comes the T-57. That's going to be a, a a big clip to bounce. Bounce it. Bounce it. Come on, Jameis. Nerd Kisses Girls picks him off from the far side again, and they kill him. The Sturve for L-O-E-T finding himself as the last tank again. And that bat chat proving to be crucial in the final stages for immortals um if it wasn't for that bad chat if it wasn't for nerd kisses girls left alive kilimanjaro could have come in and much uh much more easily protected the final is7 for loet and that stir can really take a beating it can but they're Not still able. So many people. Yeah, <laughs> it's only good at at engagements uh, directly in front. It can't turn its turret. It doesn't have a turret to turn. So, wow, Immortals coming back from what I thought was the brink of defeat, uh, taking yep. that round. That was a great round. Airs and Nerd Kisses girls both breaking four thousand damage. You don't normally see two tanks on the same team breaking 4,000 damage, but uh, those two really carried it that round. Uh, Abiotic Hollow still getting 2,800 damage, but not enough to share with the rest of uh, the rest of the Immortals, only two others breaking 1,000. L-O-E-T getting 3,600 from Wooden Bobcat Man in the E4 and 2,200 from the STRV in the uh, Kilimanjaro in the STRV. Uh, those those TDs have been able to deal quite a bit of damage for LOET on that map, but in the late game, uh, without support, uh, it, it it's difficult to clutch in in a TD. Um, Immortals getting 20 for the win, 14 for the kills, and the extra three points for three survive. 37 points for Immortals that round. <laughs> Uh, four kills, getting eight points for LOET. We're going to be going into round... Um, this is the last one. Yeah, the last round. Um, so, oh, I missed the point for the giveaway, but I'm doing the giveaway now. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. It's hard to do it because we were live in a battle when the actual giveaway happened. All right, slash giveaway, Whoop. slash giveaway, slash giveaway. How the hell do I do that? Slash giveaway. Valto, congratulations, Valto. You were the winner of the giveaway after round two. <laughs> right off the bat, ragged. 
It's it, it's a bot that does it. All I do is slash giveaway, and it just automatically what? does it. Volto, <laughs> is that allowed? Oh, nice. is, is that allowed? Is, is... <laughs> I think it's just staff that can't. So... It's just staff? Okay. <laughs> um, so congratulations, Volto, on winning the giveaway after round two. Now stay tuned. Uh, we will be doing a giveaway after... The, this round that's coming up um, but after the round plays live for our, after the round plays in the 10 minute delay god this is so confusing <laughs> um, yes <laughs> I'm trying to watch my stream while streaming so that I can do the giveaway in the time that is happening for you guys so if it's off by a little bit bear with me I apologize we are in the training room lobby getting ready to start round four. All right, and I am starting. Okay, round four, here we go. All right. L-O-E-T in the red on the left. They're the Axes versus the Allies Immortals on the right in blue. The final round of Immortals versus L-O-E-T. These have been three really exciting matches. Um, like every single round has gone so close to the end uh you couldn't pick like i i was i was calling out loet for the winner on, on on two of those rounds and uh the mortals just showing how much skill and determination um, they have they they're never out till they're out exactly i mean there's, there's a reason why they've gone all the way to the to the end of uh countless high profile tournaments Bird kisses girls inching around the edge of the little hill here, the cliff, and he's waiting for his opportunity. The two bat chats are kind of, for each side, are kind of toying with each other in the middle here. Oh, Giddy gets hit makes... as he tries to run. Oh, it makes me nervous because uh, LOET has all auto loaders except for their E4 and like good auto loaders, but every reload call those they out. really have to time them. Why don't you call those tanks out? Because I didn't call those out yet. Alright, so LOET has an E4, two bat chats, and one, two, and four T57 heavies. The Immortals have an E4. I just hope that they time them. Did you call the Immortals? No, I called out LOET. Yeah. The Immortals have an E4, two bat chats, two IS7s, and two T57 heavies. I love auto loaders, but that's a lot of downtime if they're not timed. Well, the T57 has a very fast reload for a heavy yeah. auto loader. Like, it's not as long it's as uh, most of the other auto loaders. Focus firing out, uh, staying there, taking the first kill. OET's up and ahead. Three of wow! Them reload. Wow, that burst fire put LOET just shy of 20% health lead there and a gun advantage. But like you say, the reload is excruciatingly long when you can't fire back. Down goes Giddy. Well, they had Giddy. three of them reloading at one time. I mean, that can really bite you in the end, but... 
Immortals looks like they were uh, strategically taking out both of the bat chats for LOET. Now they control the range of this game. <gasps> Sir Tubbins goes down. Tubbins. And the LOET is pushing in on Valto. Wow, they are. I was 57 hit me, they're putting a beating on me. Smill trying to take out Am I Late or he can reload. Am I Late tucks in and moves up. Three tanks left for Immortals, five tanks left for LOET. Smill coming in. They do trying have a few oh. one shots. They do. Oh. Smill goes down as he tries to run away and nerd kisses girls is the last tank left for the immortals i think at this point it's smart for loet to just jump on the cap they need that 20 point bonus two points for killing nerd kisses girls is you know they do want those two points but i really think they need to take those 20 points for the victory um I guess with five and a half minutes left on the clock, that is quite a lot of time to chase him down. But, I mean, Nerd Kisses Girls is a fabulous tanker, and, and. Yep. If they don't take him out here crossing, and they do, oh. I could have seen Nerd Kisses Girls. If he got away on that crossing there, I could have seen Nerd Kisses Girls taking that for a long run around the map. After battle result. And I result, definitely would be surprised if he had taken a few people with him. Exactly. He just couldn't make it. Jameis in the E4 crushing just uh, crushing 4,000 damage and 4 kills. Excellent game for him. 26.57 and 26.47 for Am I Late and Wooden Bobcat Man in T57s. Uh, quite, a, quite a good damage spread for the, the whole team on LOET. Uh, Immortals having only one tank break 2,000 damage. That's Smill in the bat chat. Uh, so LOET taking the 20 points for the round victory, 14 for the kills, and five, uh, five for the survived tanks. 39 points for the round for them. They actually had the single highest round point score in this, in this series. They, uh, Although they lost the first three rounds, this fourth round was the most... Uh, the most, it's not even one-sided, but, but they gained more points than Immortals were able to gain in any single round, uh, first three. Uh, but, uh, having said that, it still gives the Immortals the series with 115 points total for the Immortals. Sixty-three points total for LOET. Uh, excellent matchup. I'd love to see these teams play again. Uh, and as I've said many times, LOET with more and more experience, I think they're going to be a stronger and stronger team out there. Um, I'd you know actually I'd like to add the disclaimer for the points. I am not the I'm not official scorekeeper. I'm just tallying them up on a piece of paper here as I'm doing the stream for the viewers so that. You don't have to go and pause and, and go back and do all this. I, I've done it. Uh, it's it's not official, but that is my rough draft tally. Official scores are all done by CW staff themselves. Uh, I am just streamer staff. <laughs> 